Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to add text in the values area of a pivot table. Now, I got this idea from a Mr. Excel post, and I thought it was pretty interesting, and I wanted to share with my audience. So, if you create a pivot table, let's make a pivot table out of this particular table. This is a range. Let me turn this into a table. Uh, my table has headers, just to make it easier. And turn this into a pivot table. I, I did Control T to turn this into a table. Then I'm going to insert a pivot table. And let's see how, how it works initially if we wanted to put those values. Like we wanted to put these particular color values as text. It's not going to let you do it, right? So if I add a region here and I add period here, and if I add colors, what it's going to do is it's going to count. So if I clicked on the drop down and clicked on value settings, you notice that it's going to summarize because it's text. It doesn't really do anything. I can't really do anything but summarize. It's going to count it. Now there's a way to do, to add that text in there because if you want to do a before and after here and just put in the text value, the text as values, there's a way to do it and that's putting it into the data model. Let's delete this. Right click, delete. And what we need to do is when we create a pivot table is we have to add it into the data model. So I'm going to go to insert, pivot table, and we do the same thing we had here, but we need to add this to the data model. I'm going to put this into the existing worksheet before we had it put into a new worksheet. Let's put it into the existing worksheet and location. I'll just put it way out here in J2. Click OK. And let's start to build it. So I have region here and period here, and if I put color here, you'll notice it does the same thing, but we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to add a new measure to that table. So I'm hovering over the table one uh, name. By default, when we create a table, it's going to give it a default name. You can see it's, it's table one here. So, so in table one here, I'm going to go right click and add measure. So this option is available because it was added to the data model. So I'll click on that. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this measure a new name. Let's just call it uh, color and I'm going to call it text. So it's the text of the color. And we're going to use a DAX function, a DAX function called concatenate X. So it's concatenate C O N X. So if I, if I click on this, you can see that what it does is it evaluates an expression on the row on the table and returns a concatenation of those values. So what this is going to do is it's going to combine the text or those values within that particular cell. Uh, now, it's not really going to do any combination right now because I've only got uh, one value for that row that's uh, unique. But I'm going to add something later on and you're going to see, you're going to see how it happens to combine it with the delimiter, the, the comma delimiter, delimiter. So double click that. Uh, it's going to ask for the table. That's going to be table one. If I type in TAB, you notice that it kind of figures out table one is there. So I'll just double click that. And next, it's going to ask for the expression. So I'll press comma. And what expression do we, do we want to put in there? And basically, it's going to be my column that has that expression, right? So the column is in table one. If I type in color, that's the one I want. If I type in color, you can, you can notice that it gives me some, oh, let me move this tip here up here. Now here, it's going to show color. It's going to show table one color. Uh, I'm going to select table one color. That's the table that I'm in. Color is the column that it is associated with. Click on that and comma the delimiters. So what do I want to separate these values with? I'm going to separate it with a comma, right? Comma, space, semicolon, and you have to wrap those in, not a semicolon, you have to wrap the, the comma within a quotes, double quotes. And then close parentheses. Let me check the formula. Okay, the, this doesn't have any errors. Click OK. And what it's done is it's added an extra measure here, right? So now I can pull this in here. And now you'll see that it's in that data field. Usually you can only have numbers in there. There's text. So that's pretty nice. We don't need these grand totals. Click on that, right click, and remove grand total. I can do the same thing for here. Right click and remove grand total, right? So now you notice I've only got one value here, but let's say for example, I have, let me duplicate this, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Let's put this at red and I'll say nothing, right? 
and then I'm going to right click my pivot table, click refresh. And now you're going to notice that it's added the particular other value there and it's separated by a comma. So generally I notice about the fields up here, you want to have before come first and then after, right? If I try to hover over this and have it move, it doesn't let me move it. Now, or if I tried to type in before, there's a trick here where in pivot tables you can type in the heading and it will kind of move everything over. You can see nothing got moved over. Now it just has two befores and that doesn't really work out too well. And if we wanted to have this come before that, and it's usually some kind of ascending order, what I found is but I'd have to kind of change it within this particular column to associate it with something, a number or a letter that would come prior. So what I've done here is I've just taken the before and made that and added the number one in front of it. I just did a control F. All right, find the before and replace it with a one underscore before, all right? So that replaces all of that. And for the after, actually I don't really need to do this with the after, but I think this is probably good to uh, do that for kind of trackability. I do after here, replace all, close. And now I can right click, refresh, and now we've got before coming on the first column and after coming on the second column. So that's the workaround that I tried to kind of shift columns in an order that is a little bit more easy to read. And now here, I don't really need to have that number one, even though I have a number one here, I don't really need to have the number one here. So I can delete it here without affecting my uh, display too much, All right? So I can just delete that, All right? And even if I refresh, Right click, let's right click, refresh. And even if I refresh, right click, refresh, it'll still be okay. The labels uh, won't uh, clobber what I've edited here. So that kind of helps out there. So this is the way that we can have text in the value section of a pivot table. And this is a tip I got from an Mr. Excel blog. He's got great stuff there. If you can just Google Mr. Excel, you'll see that he's got a lot of stuff of, of Excel tricks and tips. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.